Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Miss Global of Motivation. I know y'all can hear the TV and me cut it down. I was watching Mo and Ray Love on live. But I am back, back, back here. And I'm back today. We're going to be doing a spiritual motivation video. No eating. I got some coffee. I got some water. And once I get through this video, I'm going to go do my morning walk. I don't think y'all seen my steps for yesterday. I don't even think I posted my steps yesterday because after I, um, excuse me, after I got through doing my walk yesterday, uh, I ended up going downstairs sitting with my sister until she got ready to leave. Uh, let me find my script, what I want to talk about today. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. I need to get my Bible, what I'm going to use, open up to the scripture. Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. How is everybody doing? God bless you all. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to get up and let y'all up a little bit because I see my head is cut off. Y'all, I've been busy. Like, ooh, for real. Busy doing nothing. Literally. Busy doing nothing. Yeah, I ain't had no more doctor's appointment. Thank God for that. I think I got one on the 8th. And I'm actually thinking about counseling that one. Cause, but I guess I better go because that's where I get my pain medicine from. We're going to be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We all shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad, so grateful, and so thankful for God for blessing me to live to see another brand new day, another beautiful, blessed week. Uh, I thank him for carrying me through all week long, and he really has carried me through and carried you through. And, I, I, of course, I want to share something with you guys before I get into the video. So, just make sure you guys watch the video all the way to the end. Even if you don't sit there and watch it, put it on with the phone or on the computer or the TV or something. Just let it play. Let my ass play. Help me out, guys. You know, because I watch it. I, I know that my video is not being watched all the way through. I know. You know, all you got to do is read the analytics. If you know how to read those analytics, you know. And plus, we get a monthly analytics from YouTube, and we get a, a weekly recap thing from YouTube, too. So I know how is it doing it. It let me know who come back, who's a, a long-time follower that's watching my video. It, it lets you know if it's the normal watchers or if it's the new, if it's somebody new. The new people are overtaking the, the, my regular subscribers. My, the the new subscribers are overtaking my my um my um uh, my returning subscribers. I'll say it like that. So I know when it's not being watched. Um, and I watch everybody's videos. Every video I watch, I try to comment on every video. If I comment, I don't watch that whole video all the way through the ass and everything. So. I don't understand why people's are, people's are, listen, let me tell you something. People's are leave comments on my video, but when I see the thumbs up, you could tell they didn't even thumb, they didn't even like the video. Because I can see. I know my thumbs up is on there. It'd be the first one that you see on there, because when I get through editing my video, I automatically thumbs it up. And then when somebody said, uh, the you know, comment on the video, I don't see a thumbs up. So I'm automatically knowing that my videos is not being watched. But of course, there's nothing I can do about it because what God has for me is for me. And uh, I want to say this. I have a person that asked me to kind of talk about myself and tell them a little something about myself. This person is a big subscriber. And this is a big YouTuber. And she commented on my, she left me a message, I'm going to say that. And she said she's been watching me. 
she said that she'd been going through something. She let me know that she was going through uh, a separation, a divorce or something, and that she lost somebody in the family. And she told me that watching my videos, hearing me sharing the inspiring word of God has really, is it is really helping her. She told me to, um, to do this video and um, that she was gonna, she told me to put my cash app and stuff in there. Uh, and I was telling her that, you know, well, you know, we got a thank you button and, you know, super chat stickers and all. She said, no, that's, that money goes to YouTube. You don't hardly get in today. I want to bless your platform. I want to bless you because she said that you are really pouring the word of God into not just her, but a lot of other people that watch this video, even though they don't say it. She said that the words you are putting out is really feeding it to their hearts. And it make me feel good. And I know from the time this person has been watching, because I know she let me know. She she talks, she comment, she done follow me everywhere on my Facebook, my my regular Facebook page, which is under my 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 which is under my government name. She followed me on my Facebook fan page. She followed me on my Instagram, on my Snapchat. Uh I don't think she followed me on TikTok. I'm not sure. I have to go check that out. But I know she is because she let me know that she's following me there. And and just since this person has came to my channel and because she was in need and seeking God, she needed some help from God. And because God helped her through the mouth of minds, she, uh, she have brought a lot of subscribers to my channel. Just in March, I got 200 and some new subscribers just in March. Before March, I got 100 and some new subscribers. Mm -hmm. And so this just let me know that God is doing just what he said he was doing. He's blessing my, um, he's blessing my platform according to his will. And it's all up to God. <sighs> Just a minute. But anyway, just since she had been uh, subscribed to my channel, I have gained so many followers. And I know that God is doing what he said he was doing. He said, if you be faithful, if you be obedient, that he will supply all of my needs. And he's doing just that. And you know, I could want so many more things, which I do want so many more things. But me wanting them is not going to make me get out of the will of God. I'm not going to step out of the will of God to try to do nothing uh, I don't know. It's not going to make me step out of the will of God, okay? Because I want a car. Um, I never really, I used to, when I was very young and had my kids, I desired to, to own a the want to own a home, but now I don't think I want to own a home. Uh, and if I do, it will only be for the reason of, you know, when I leave here, leaving it to my grandchildren so that they can have somewhere to stay and they won't have to depend on paying rent to nobody else. But the thing is, they still going to have to pay taxes. They're going to have to pay their land taxes. They're still going to have to maintain their utility bills, their water and all that. So it doesn't matter about that. I just ask God to bless them. And supply all their needs as well as me. Okay? That's that's all I can do. But this person has started watching my videos. 
and wanted to know a little bit about me and, and you know, is ready for me to share the word today. So I'm going to go ahead and share the word that the Lord is putting on my heart, which is our devotion for the day. And I pray that you, you know who you are. You get something out of this devotion. I pray that God ease your pain, soothe your heart, mend your heart, fill the gap what uh, that's empty because of what you're going through. I pray that he do all that. I hope that he ease your grieving period because grieving is something that must take place. Everybody go through it and everybody grieves differently and in their own way. You know, uh, I was told that there's 12 steps to grieving, okay? And I don't think to this day I have went through the 12 steps of grieving from uh, me losing my son, I don't have on my necklace and stuff, y'all, because I, when I get in the shower and when I get through walking, I take it off when I get in the shower because I like silver, sterling silver. I like anything silver and white gold. That's what I love, silver and white gold. I don't like gold jewelry at all. I don't like gold. It's not for my skin tone or none of that. So I take it off. But um, I hope that God really mends your heart. I really hope he give you, restore back unto you the joy and his strength and his peace because you are already walking and covered under grace and mercy and everything will get better. As long as you did what you have to do, you had to do and you repented of your sins and you seeking God and now he's going to fill everything in you. He's going to fill you up so full that you're going to start running and telling people about him. That's how good God is. That is how good he is. He makes you want to tell somebody about him. And I love sharing the good news of God. And I hope you get something out of this video, okay? Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, as I begin to get into this word, Lord, talking about the new identity in Christ. Father God, I ask that you, right now, that you forgive me for all of my sins. Forgive me for every sin that I have committed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for my secret sins, Lord. Forgive me for the sins of my childhood, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I ask that you, right now, create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. And I ask that you touch my tongue. And anoint my mouth, Lord, to speak words that is inspiring, that is uplifting, that is edifying and motivating peoples to come unto you. Help me, God, to be the soul winner that you made me to be, the servant that you made me to be, the disciple that you called me to be, God, the missionary, the evangelist that you called me to be, so that I may be a help and a light to somebody in the mighty name of Jesus a man and covered by your word. Mm, thank you, God. So today we're going to be coming from uh, Second Corinthians, and we're going to be uh, talking uh, from. Let me get this out the way so I can get my Bible up to me. We're going to be coming from uh, the second book of Corinthians, chapter five, verses fourteen through twenty-one. The memory verse for this uh, devotion that I'm going to be sharing with y'all is. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. And that comes from 1 John 3 and 1. We're going to go to 1 John right quick. Let's go to 1 John 3. 1 John is in the back of the book. It's next to Peter, I think. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's next to Peter, the second Peter. So we're going to 1 John three and one. And we're going to read that word again. It said, behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew not him. That's first John three and one. And it's telling us, letting us know that we are children of God and that God is love. So that since God is love and, and because he bestowed the love upon us, that's why we are called the son of God. Therefore, he said the world know it us not because the world know God not. Okay. We are new Jesus not. And if we go to the footnotes, it tells us that 
Verse 1 tells us who we are in God, okay? What I just read, it tells us who we are in God. It said we are called the sons and daughters of God. It tells us who we are in God, who we are, members of God's family, okay? Verse 2 tells us who we are becoming, the reflections of God, and we want to be the reflection of God. The rest of the chapter tells us what we will have as we grow to resemble God, okay? So if you read uh, 1 John chapter 3, it's going to tell you all that. It's going to tell you who you are. It's going to tell you how you resemble God. It's going I mean, the reflections of God. It's going to show you how you get victory over sin, how to love others, and how to have confidence before God. So I'm hoping that this helps somebody. Now let's get back to our script devotional scripture for the day. Coming from 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 21. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the reading because I want to get through. I want to go walking. I got to do my steps for this morning. And it reads as thus. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Okay? Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature because you are in Christ now. You have become a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things about you and in you have become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by the blood of Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, okay, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world, try to reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed us unto the world of reconciliation. Now that we are ambassadors of Christ, okay, this is verse 20. Now we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead you, that you be reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us. God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know no sin. That we might be made righteousness unto God in him. That's the 21st verse. If I was you, I'm going to recommend that you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the entire chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, telling us about how our earthly bodies are weak and how through the blood of Jesus Christ, we became reconciled to God, okay, and how we became made a new creature in Christ. If, read the entire chapter 5. But if I go to the footnotes, since this word is telling us about our new identity in Christ, we want to get the footnotes so we can get an understanding of it. The footnotes, this, the word started at 14, but I'm going to start with the footnotes at 15. It's already highlighted. You can see some of the orange highlighting here. Okay. It say everything Paul had had everything Paul and his companions did was to honor God. Christ's love controlled their lives because Christ died for us all, not just for Paul and his companion. Christ died for all of us, okay? We also are dead to our old lives because we are made new creatures in Christ. We have been made dead to our old lives, okay? Like Paul, we should no longer live to please ourselves. It's not about living to please ourselves anymore. It's about living to please God. Okay? We are to spend our lives pleasing Christ. Hallelujah. And the only way we can please God is through Jesus Christ. Okay? It's 
We are to spend our life pleasing Christ who died and rose again for us. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. Christians are brand new peoples. Listen. And brand new peoples on the inside. The Holy Spirit gives them new life. And they are not the same anymore. I am not the same anymore. I'm not the person I used to be on the inside because I now operate under a new life in Jesus Christ. The old man, the old me has been done away with. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. Okay? And it said, we are now reformed. We are not reformed rehabilitated or re-educated. No, we are not. Listen to this. We are new creations. We are new creation living in vital union with Jesus Christ. You can read that in Colossians chapter two, I think. Okay. And then it says, we are not merely turning over a new leaf. We are beginning a new life under a new master. Hallelujah. We are no longer serving Satan. We are no longer bound by the chains of sin. We are a new creation in Christ. And then it says, God brings us back to himself by blotting out our sins. Read Ephesians chapter 2. It'll tell you all about that. And making us righteousness. We are no longer strangers. We are no longer foreigners or enemies to God when we trust in Jesus Christ. We have been reconciled like a fist tight with God. Okay? Because we have been reconciled to God, he now gives us the privileges mm -hmm, to encourage others. That's what my platform is all about, encouraging you guys. God gives me the privilege to encourage you guys because I have been reconciled, reconnected to God through his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, so God gave me the privileges to encourage others to do the same. And I encourage you guys to do the same, to share this word of God with somebody. Okay. Then it say an ambassador. Now it's going to tell us what our role is as an ambassador because we are a new creature in Christ. An ambassador is an official representative from one country to another. We are to go out in the hedges, the highways, the skyways, the airways, everywhere. We are to go everywhere. Huh. And encourage others to become believers in Christ. Okay? We are an official representative from one country to another. As believers, we are Christ's ambassadors. Sent with his message of reconciliation to the world. An ambassador of reconciliation has an important responsibility. We dare not to take this responsibility lightly. Don't you do it. How well are you Fulfilling your commission to Christ as an ambassador. How well are you fulfilling? How well are you fulfilling your commission to Christ as being his ambassador? In the 21st verse, when we trust in Christ, we make an exchange. He takes our sins and makes us right with God. Our sins was laid on Christ at his crucifixion. His righteousness is given to us at our conversion. Mm, hallelujah. This is what Christians mean by, mean by Christ's atonement for sins. In a world, bartendering works only when two people exchange goods of relatively equal value. But God offers to trade his righteousness for our sins. Something of immeasurable worth for something completely worthless. God offered his righteousness for well, Jesus Christ for our sins. And we was totally worthless. We was worthless and not worthy of Jesus Christ dying for us. 
okay? And then they say how grateful we should be for his goodness to us. That word was something all by itself. It was powerful. It was good. Yes. So the word for today, the title is New Identity in Christ. What is your new identity in Christ? Or are you living in your new identity in Christ? Hallelujah. What does it mean to you that a new beginning is possible with God? What does it mean to you that a new beginning is possible with God? And how can you live as his new creation? Let those questions ponder in your heart. Abba Father, thank you for sending your son to save me and the world for my sins. Please send me to someone who needs you, Lord. Help me to share your goodness, to, show your, to share your good news. Help me to be what you want me to be. Lead and guide and direct me, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Order my steps in your word, Lord. Speak to my spirit, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that you continue to fill me with your wisdom. I ask that you continue to reveal the mysteries of your words to me. And Lord, I ask that you continue to put within me a spirit of discernment so that I may know what's good from what's bad, the truth from a lie and fill my heart with love that I may be continue to lavish in your love on others. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that this video helps somebody. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you bless your peoples everywhere that watches this video, that hears this video, not just the ones that watch it, but the ones that can't not see but can hear God, bless them. Let your word be a blessing to them because we know that your word is already blessed. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. This was a very good devotion. New identity in Christ. Because now, let's look, let's read this right quick before we go. I, I am not who I once was. I'm a new person. Those simple words from my son spoken to students at the school assembly. Describe the change God made in his life, in my life, okay? Once addicted to heroin, Jeffrey previously saw himself through sins, through his sins and mistakes. But now he sees himself as a child of God. The Bible encourages us with this promise. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. No matter who we have been or what we have done in our past, when we trust Jesus for our salvation and receive the forgiveness offered through his cross, we become someone new. Someone new. Listen. Since the Garden of Eden, the guilt of our sins has separated us from God, but he has now reconciled us to himself through Christ. Not counting our sins against us. We are his dearly loved children. 1 John 3. Washed clean and made new in the likeness of his son. Jesus delivered us from sin and it's the, the dominating power and restores us into a new relationship with God. Where we are free to no longer live for ourselves but for him who died for us and was raised again. 2 Corinthians 5. On this New Year's Day, let's remember that his transforming love compels us to live with a new identity and a new purpose in life. It helps us point others to our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who can make them new peoples too. We can't make nobody new, but Jesus Christ can and I hope you guys got some out of this word. That's the end of this video. To the person that asked me to do this video, I know that you got the wisdom of this word. I know that you're going to get something out of it. And if you need to talk to me, you know how to reach out to me on either any one of my platforms. The only one you can reach out to me personally on is the YouTube one. You can leave a, a, a comment in the comment section. Uh, you can email me because my email is also... Um, 
in the description of my video. Uh, everything that you need to get in touch with me is in this description box in my video. My, my business address, my email, all of my uh, social media platforms is there. You can inbox me on those and we can talk personally. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to say I'm a FaceTime with anyone because that's a little bit too personal because I don't know. But once we talk, then eventually we will start talking on the phone, exchange numbers because I have exchanged my numbers with some of my other um, YouTube family members before. So thank you for watching. Remember, we're all under one God, one nation, one love. Peace we have because Jesus died that we may have peace. He rose again that we may raise from the dead and become a new creature in Christ, living a new life with the hope of making it to heaven one day so that we will be able to live with him, dwell with him there in paradise. Thank you for watching. Remember, God loves you so much that he allowed his son, Jesus, to lay down his life so that we may have a new life. I'll see you on the next video. God bless. And please ask God to give you the mystery. The, men, the mystery of his word and to reveal what the word is saying to you in your heart. I love you all. God bless. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Bye.